Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about apical pills. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What is apical pulse? The apical pulse refers to the heartbeat heard at the apex of the heart. It is also referred to as the point of maximal impulse. PMI or precordial impulse or central pulse. It is commonly used in clinical settings to assess cardiac function and detect any abnormalities in the heart's rhythm or rate. The apical pulse gives more accurate reading compared to the radial pulse because it directly measures the heartbeat at its source. Next is indications for apical pulse. Assessment of the apical pulse is indicated for cardiovascular assessment. The heart's function is mainly assessed by apical pulse and also to detect any abnormalities in its rhythm or rate. It also has a significant role in detecting and managing conditions such as arrhythmias, heart failure and valve disorders. Next indications include Medications that alters the heart rate and rhythm, example digoxin. When patients with heart conditions are under treatment with cardiac drugs, for example digoxin, apical pulse can be used to monitor the effectiveness of the treatment and also if the medication is working and how well the patient is responding to the treatment. Next, apical pulses monitor when peripheral pulse is irregular or weak or rapid or unavailable. Next indications include in newborns, infants and children up to 5 years old because in children below 5 years old, it becomes difficult to palpate radial pulses and hence apical pulse is monitored. Moreover, in patients who are obese, apical pulses monitor because their peripheral pulses are difficult to palpate. Next, where to check the apical pulse? Apical pulse is located above the apex of the heart. Apex is the tip of the left ventricle that points downward in the left side of the chest. In adults, the apical pulse is located at the fifth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line as shown in the picture. On the other hand, in infants and young children, the apical pulse is located at the fourth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line. In certain conditions like dextrocardia, the apex of the heart is on the right side. Next, procedure to assess apical pulse. Identify the patient and explain the procedure to the patient. Wash hands. Position the patient in supine or to sit upright. Locate the point of maximal impulse by palpating the chest in the areas of the apex of the heart. The point of maximal impulse that is apical pulse is typically located in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line of the chest. Here comes how to identify the fourth and the fifth intercostal space. First, let's know what is intercostal space. You can easily understand by looking at this picture. The intercostal spaces are spaces between adjacent ribs. Fourth intercostal space is located between fourth and fifth ribs. And fifth intercostal space is located between fifth and sixth ribs. Let's see how to identify and locate the fourth and the fifth intercostal space. This is identified using angle of Louis method. The angle of Louis, that is sternal angle, is a useful place to start counting the ribs. Now, the first step is to palpate the jugular notch or sternal notch. The sternal notch, also known as the jugular notch or suprasternal notch, is a V-shaped indentation at the top of the sternum, that is breastbone, located in the midline of the neck. So, from the sternal notch, move your fingers down the manubrium a few centimeters until you feel a bony lump or ridge, which is called the sternal angle or the angle of Louis. Now, move your hand to your left and feel the second rib 
then descend into the second left intercostal space and further descend into the third, fourth and fifth intercostal space. Once you identify the second rib, then it will be easy to identify the subsequent ribs. After identifying the fifth intercostal space, place the diaphragm or bell of the stethoscope over the fifth intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line of the chest, making sure that it is in full contact with the skin. Listen for the rate, rhythm and the strength of the heartbeat for a full minute. Assess the regularity of the heartbeat and note any arrhythmias, extra beats or a murmur. Now, after this procedure gets over, make the patient comfortable. Record the results and record the heart rate and any abnormalities detected in the patient's medical chart. Compare this with the radial pulse to know the pulse deficit. While doing this procedure, there may be two nurses sometime involved in checking the pulse where one may check the radial pulse and the other will be looking for the apical pulse. Next comes pulse deficit. What do we mean by a pulse deficit? Pulse deficit refers to the difference between the heart rate and the peripheral pulse rate. Pulse deficit can be determined by taking both the heart rate and the peripheral pulse rate simultaneously and then subtracting the peripheral pulse rate from the heart rate. For example, the heart rate is 110 beats per minute and the peripheral pulse rate is 90 beats per minute. Now, pulse deficit is found by subtracting the peripheral pulse rate 90 from the heart rate 110 which gives 20 beats per minute which is the pulse deficit. The heart rate and the peripheral pulse rate should be the same or very close to each other. A pulse deficit may indicate an underlying condition that requires medical attention such as an irregular heart rhythm, poor peripheral perfusion or other cardiac or vascular conditions. In cases where the patient has a pulse deficit, it should never be delayed and reported immediately and continuous monitoring of the patient should be done. Now, let's have a look on the apical pulse rate by ages. In fans 0 to 12 months, the apical pulse varies between 100 to 160 beats per minute. In toddlers 1 to 3 years old, it varies between 90 to 150 beats per minute. In preschoolers 3 to 5 years, it varies between 80 to 140 beats per minute. In school age children between 6 to 12 years, the apical pulse ranges 75 to 118 beats per minute. In adolescents 12 to 18 years, the apical pulse varies between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And in adults 18 years or older, the apical pulse ranges between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Next comes factors that can affect the apical pulse rate. First is age. The apical pulse rate typically decreases as a person ages. Next is physical activity. Exercise or physical activity can increase the apical pulse rate temporarily. Next is anxiety, which can cause the apical pulse rate to increase. Next is medications. Medications such as beta blockers or digitalis can affect the apical pulse rate as discussed before. Next comes fever. An increase in body temperature due to a fever can cause the apical pulse rate to increase. Next comes dehydration. A decrease in fluid volume can cause the apical pulse rate to increase. Next is disease conditions such as anemia, hyperthyroidism or heart disease can also affect the apical pulse rate. So here you go with apical pulse. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. I take this opportunity to thank all who have joined in our channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.